Lorna, Lorna Mitchell, Lorna Jane Mitchell. What do you prefer this week? Just Lorna. Lorna. Hey, Lorna. Good morning. Hi. How's it going? Where did you get back from last night? Um, I have been teaching a new client in Cambridgeshire, which is about 100 miles south of where I live here in northern England. Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community and business. for that? There, of course there is. Lorna, we are doing a session at DrupalCon Mumbai called Meet PHP Fig. Your community just got a lot bigger, Drupal. Cool. Can you give us a rough outline of what PHP Fig is and why it's important? Sure. So PHP Fig is, well, it's kind of a group of people, but actually it's a movement um, around standardizing our best practices in PHP. It's formed by some very smart and committed, mostly project leads. So it's it's framework project leads, people who are doing important stuff, mostly in user land in PHP, um, and who really have a sense of what the community needs. And it's important because it formalizes the best practice. So we can all agree, hey, we're gonna do it this way. And it allows us to all do our own thing and still play nicely together. So like framework interoperability literally allows us to play nicely together. PHP Fig is PHP Framework Interoperability Group. Yes. And I would contend that this is one of the biggest enablers for this huge convergence, this huge coming together that we've, we've seen in PHP over the last uh, in, in, in recent years, and um, I would also contend it's essentially what made it possible for Drupal 8 to, to even exist in its current form. What would you say to that? I would absolutely agree. Shortly before we really um, started with this, this fig thing, which initially was just auto-loading, it was because PHP 5.3 has namespaces, so now we can pull components and start to pick a mix. We don't all need to write our own date class. We don't all need to write our own logger class. We can all just share. Before that, I wrote an article for NetMag called PHP Land of a Thousand Frameworks. And uh. it literally, everybody was siloed. If you wrote a framework, you had to write all of it yourself. Now we have standard best practices. Everybody uses monologue and it's great. Why would we reinvent that? Drupal 8 is a really great example of composing something even greater than the sum of its parts. If we'd had to ship that by writing every line ourselves, it would just never have happened or it wouldn't have been as good. Right, so the other, um, I think a, a lot of us were calling this the PHP Renaissance for a long time, but good old Larry Garfield gave us his articles, uh, getting off the island, building mm -hmm. bridges, um, and I forget what the third part was, but um, it's, it's this, uh, expression of this idea that, you know, the archipelago has now become networked somehow. I remember uh, it's not too long ago, right, that you were a Zen developer and you were a Drupal developer and you were a WordPress developer and you were a PHP BB developer and you were a whatever else. And um, so many more people now just say, oh, I do PHP. And, and we've got all these fantastic community events where everybody comes together. And um, I, I love that feeling. It's... Uh, and I love the technical results. I've been playing with Drupal 8, and it's, um, it's pretty great so far. We finally got it out the door. Yes, I was at PHP World on release day, and that was a really, really, fa really fabulous place to be with all the communities together. And yeah, um, just seeing the Drupal 8 news. I was on stage, guys. <laughs> wow. And the Drupal, 8, the Drupal 8 news came out, and um, yeah, I was really, I mean, it would be super exciting wherever you were, but. Um, I was at PHP World, which brings together all the PHP communities. And it was great to see so many people from all the different communities and really sharing their ideas. And then we, yeah, Drupal 8 on top in the same week. It was magic. Yeah. No, PHP World is a great example of, of what I'm talking about. I uh, insert shameless plug here. I keynoted the first PHP World in 2014. And uh, it was 
fantastic to see all these different tracks about all these different things and be able to to contrast and compare. And the hallway track was was really really powerful for me. Just getting to meet people who do really really different things and and figure out what we could do for each other and what I what ideas are happening in different places and how we could bring that together. I love that. I love that feeling. Yeah, I loved it too. So I went this year, 2015, so just a few months ago, and I keynoted there. And the same thing, meeting everybody, asking how things are going, being able to catch the inside story from communities that I might not go to a dedicated event for those communities, um, but to be able to catch up with them, hear their stories, and also introduce them to each other was super exciting. And it was so good to see those ideas being exchanged. So... Let's test your PHP fig knowledge, Lorna. Uh -huh. PSR zero, go. Uh, auto loading. And. But we don't use it anymore, right? So right. yeah, PSR zero, auto loading. PSR four, now we've had namespaces for a while and we know how to play nicely. This is how we really wanted to do auto loading. Give me a really <laughs> brief sketch. What is auto loading? Why is it important? Sure, so auto loading in PHP, new PHP, PHP made in the last decade. We don't include files, we just say, hey, I want this class, and we write auto loading rules, which is PHP knows how to go and look for the code. Before PHP 5.3, the renaissance or the revolution, depending how you want to talk about it, every framework kind of had its own rules on naming of classes and ways to find them, some of them call their classes class or whatever. The autoloaders mean that we can set up the rules for each framework and we I don't think anyone really intended that Composer was in our future when we designed the PSR zero standard, but it turned out to be an amazing enabler and now everybody can safely load all of their code, even if you have a class called date and I have a class called date, um, all using the autoloading standard. So it's come beyond how should we avoid requiring files and come into how do we do modern dependency management? And I've seen that, I don't want to show my age, right? But I've been in the community long enough to see that from, we didn't really know that's what we were enabling to, wait, who doesn't use this? <laughs> and that's magic. All hail, all hail namespaces and all hail composer, right? The composer yes. is the other huge ingredient for me in, in, in enabling this, 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 this synergy that we found together. As we all know, Lorna, PSR1 and PSR2 pretty much come together. <laughs> well, you have your basic coding standard and your coding style guide. What are they and why are they important? They're really important because they allow us to just agree on a coding standard. Um, every team should have a coding standard, but life is too short to argue about spaces and brackets and new lines and things. So just use PSR1, PSR2. They're a really good tools for enforcing them. It's important because it makes your code consistently readable. I am expecting layout to look like this. My brain does not have to work hard to read your code if it's well laid out. PSR1 describes things like um, function naming, um, variable naming, um, that kind of thing. PSR2 is, is a little bit more stylistic. It covers more like white space and bracket layout. PHP is obviously white space agnostic, so um, they split them into the two halves. I would always recommend that people use both. Um, and and actually, this this gets us into the space of of the the hard PSRs and the soft PSRs, right? Yes. So, um, so it's quite interesting because PSR one is really well, both of them are really you can pass it, you can implement it. It's not a guideline. It's this is how it should be. The PHP code sniffer tools have a differentiate between an error and a warning so that there is a certain amount of wriggle room and you can configure your own tools to say what's important to you. Um, some of the, there are some softer ones which say, hey, you should probably do it like this. And then there are some like, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but the PSR3 log interface, it's an interface, okay? This is the interface, we've specified the interface, you will implement the interface. That's how to do it. The, and again, it sort of it shows that best practice without us needing to make um, design decisions about it. Cool, so moving right along, PSR3 logger interface, why, what is it, why is it important? So the logger interface, the, well, it's irrelevant because we use monolog, right? Am I allowed to say that? Anyway, so. <laughs> <You get it. laughs> the, no, the idea is that um, 
you could use other logging tools. And if you needed to extend or implement your own, you can just swap out um, whatever logging solution you have and put in your own. You could wrap an existing one, you could build your own, but the logging interface describes how that behavior should work. So in our own applications, we can just change them out. And that kind of, that's the crux of the object-oriented programming idea. Exactly. The, 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 it, it could easily be that in some future uh, situation that something better or, or just different than monologue comes along and we need to be able to iterate, to swap out, to change, to meet some freaky requirements for a particular client or a particular environment, right? And these standards and the logger interface in this case allows us to do that, even if you'd prefer just to use monologue, you know, from now until the, the heat death of the universe, right? It's absolutely best in class at the moment. Has been for years, yeah. But my point about the meta systems idea and the and the the, the swappability is is yeah. Uh, I love the idea. I love the idea. But for for logging specifically, okay, there are not that many competing libraries. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, expand this conceptually across all of the the the, the this sort of standard, and and that's what we're yeah, talking absolutely, about. Okay. yeah. Okay, we talked about PSR four, which is auto loading, because it's the mm -hmm. it's the uh, successor to PSR zero, which kicked this all off. Now, talk about our newest approved PSR caching interface. Yeah, this is really the same as the logging story. There's a standard way of having a caching interface, so I can write my own caching tools and then realize that yours are way better. So as long as we've implemented the standard, then I can swap that in, or maybe I want to cache to a new platform and I need to use a different library for that, they'll all use the same interface. So it's super easy to change your caching mechanism if you need to. Uh, performance reasons, different platform. Like you say, technology evolution, it's all, it's all out there. We're, we're not writing websites and shipping them. We're building applications that will live and evolve. Ah, I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that as a pull quote. I, uh, so PSR7, now no longer our newest approved standard, HTTP message interface. Talk about that. That is super interesting. PHP solves the web problem. So fundamentally, it's a request and it's a response. We haven't traditionally written our code like that, but it's a pattern that's really common in other programming languages that do deal with HTTP messaging. I am super excited to see this one come in and also super excited to see already we have tools that are building on it. Um, out in the wild, getting actual stable releases in the community. This is going to be a big paradigm shift about the way that we build things that respond to an HTTP request. It's Talk massive. about that a little bit more. Sure. So um, a request comes in, and we can hook into stuff on that request. This is more than just an index.php front controller. This is being able to hook in middleware, process requests, um, set up various things about the request, then root out into our sort of control of actions and different things for different URLs, maybe. And again, because everything's a common response, you can hook back into that. So the middleware paradigm, which is familiar, maybe more from Node.js and their frameworks, will have that in PHP as well. And publishing the, the PSR 7 standard feels like, much like PSR 0 was just the beginning of something, mm. I think PSR 7 is as well. Oh, neat. I, um, yeah, I, I was also excited to see it, live implementations of this one happening very, very quickly in, yes. in some of the projects. It's, uh, and, um, well, and, and the standard was kind of nearly there for a long time, and a lot of smart people really, I'm glad that we hesitated on that, because what we ended up with was a really good outcome. Nobody took the easy route, and I think this is going to last us for a long time. I'm really impressed with the work that the FIG did there. Very nice. So there are six draft standards that haven't been approved uh, as yet. And I don't want to talk about all of them, but I do want to focus in on PSR 8. OK. Off the top of so your PSR head, 8. do you know what PSR 8 is? <laughs> yeah, so PSR 8 is the huggable um, <laughs> syntax. I have already compared it to the um, HTTP 418 I'm a teapot protocol. Like, I'm glad we've got a sense of humor. <laughs> Okay, but I, I want to make a plug here for the Drupal community's spirit. We, we're excited about, I mean, so Drupal 8 actually came out and obviously we're thrilled because it was emotionally very late and it was, very, it was a very stressful last couple of years. 
<clears throat> before it came out. But when you go to, you can attest to this yourself. We're a pretty friendly bunch, and and uh, <laughs> yes. and there's a lot of. I mean, it's very emotional. It's a it's a really lovely bunch of people, and there is a lot of hugging in Drupal. And I believe that um, the 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 PSR eight huggable interface uh, standard that Larry Garfield is 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 running right. I think that actually is exporting some community juice, like some community culture into the broader PHP world that we've done really, really well on Drupal. I'm, I'm actually, it's a comedy standard in a way, but I, I'm actually serious about that, that, that the somehow the warmth and the humanity in, in the, that I feel in Drupal community, I would love more people to feel that. Um, you know, some tech events we go to are really, really dry and really, you know, yes. hard work. And even at really, really technical Drupal things, I feel more humanity. This is, uh, full of disclosure, this is my people, this is my community, right? But I actually, um, I've been talking for quite a while about how PHP Fig, the PHP Renaissance, Composer, all these things will allow the smart ideas in Drupal to get out, right? We've, we've gotten off our island and we're, we've imported wonderful, fantastic, you know, external libraries and symphony components and, and really opened up our our products in Drupal 8, but this is actually an instance of, I, I genuinely think this is an instance of a good idea in Drupal tr pushing out into the rest of PHP. So, but anyway, it's also cute. And uh, <laughs> so, and um, it's, it's, I'm really glad that, that Larry proposed it because he's also a really serious technical guy that, that everybody respects essentially. So, so yeah. Yeah, this would have been much more difficult if it had not come from such, um, yeah, important <laughs> community people. <laughs> Uh, so, um, talk, so, so you're talking about um, when when we were touching on PSR seven, you're talking about building um, applications and iterating and improving them over time, right? Um, actually, it's a general meta concept that this swappability, these standards, allow us to to to. I think I guess it allows us to work more efficiently, right? Because we're not reinventing wheels. Can you talk about the architectural implications of having? Uh, the PSRs in place and and people following them. Okay, yeah, there's there's a there's a few different strands here. One is um, I'm a consultant and a trainer as well as a developer, and so I'm often asked for my advice. And PHP Fig, I feel like, have really helped us to know what the good advice is and know what best practice is to follow. So if, even for people who are on their island building an application on their own, there's a resource there that they can go to, and it will help them to make useful decisions. Beyond that, I think, you know, once upon a time, we would have shipped a website when we were tired of it in two years, we'd have shipped another website and maybe there was some content management, but it, it, it was a website. PHP now is much more about applications. I barely work on any websites, which is good because I barely write any HTML. Everything that I do is very application driven. It's very functional. It's very much software development. And our applications have a future in two senses. One, that technology moves on and we might want to switch things out or update, move from one queuing system to another, introduce a queuing system, realize that we need caching, move to a cloud platform. And I think our applications now, given these best practices and given the wide adoption of the object-oriented approach, are able to do that. And the other way that they move on is the reasons for them to exist move on. The businesses that they support grow and pivot and become successful and expand and we want to offer more things online. And I think good design practices, modern applications, allow us to, to evolve our applications in both those directions. We don't ship a new one in two years. It's still running cutting edge new technology and being iterated on in 10 years. It, that's cost effective and it's also smart. Right, so it gives, us, it gives us cheaper maintenance, it gives us cheaper innovation, it makes our applications future friendly. There's, there's some element, element of, of risk mitigation uh, around new technologies coming in as well. Yeah, definitely. And it means that we're kind of iteratively changing things. We don't have to turn off feature development and start afresh. We don't really rebuild. I mean, there are cases where you might do, but you'd have the option to rebuild portions and everything's unit tested, everything's modular. So we've got those options to start, Ugh, we really need to change this. And, by, and to do that kind of by degrees because we can switch things in and out. We're not writing big balls of code. Right, and, and this is the, um, on the, 
the, the, the largest implication of the dependency injection models, I guess, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, I'm going to try and get a sound bite out of you for the DrupalCon session that I'm preparing. Right. Um, Hi, Drupal. I'm Lorna. Um, I'm a really enthusiastic PHP user, and I am super excited to see Drupal as being just so much part of PHP these days. I've been to some Drupal cons, and seeing the, the recent release of Drupal 8 has made me very, very, very happy. So have a great Drupal con, and I will see you around at an event or in the issue queues. Yay! Lorna, thank you so much for getting up early and taking the time to talk with me before you have to rush off to work. Um, do you have any last words? Do you have uh, 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 any ongoing project, anything that you'd like to plug? Um, you can mention my uh, joined in, which is my open source um, feedback site for helping everybody who gives a talk to get feedback on that talk and continue to improve. I know there's a bunch of Drupal, some of the smaller organizations who are using it. Um, and we've been talking to the COD people. So hopefully it is in your future, even if you're not using it already. Um, no, apart from that, I'm Lola Jane and I'll see you around. Cool. Hey, Lorna, thank you so very much. Honestly, it's great to talk to you. I, I hope we get a chance to hang out in person again yeah, soon. It'd be nice to see you sometime, but it's yeah. nice to kind of virtually see you this morning. Right. Hey, so thanks. Talk to you soon. Take care.